I recently got a whole bunch of these high-speed steel tooling blanks at an estate sale. They're really too big to be useful for my lathe, but I thought I could make some large file guides using a couple, so that's what I'll be doing in today's video. I drew up a design that I can loosely follow, and I also drew up some blueprints. I know I'll deviate from these a bit, but it'll be nice to have them to use as a reference. I'll make the main body out of this piece of 1.25 by 3.25 cold rolled steel. And to get started, I'll cut a couple pieces to length, and then I'll square them up in my mill. If you're unfamiliar with what a file guide is, it allows you to make really flat cuts using a file. The top faces are usually made of a hard metal like high-speed steel or carbide, and because they're harder than the files, you can file right down to the faces, which stop the file, and you end up with a perfectly flat cut. Of course the hardened faces will destroy files, so it's a good idea to use an old one when you get close to the faces. Next I laid out some lines just as a sanity check while I'm machining them, but I got a little carried away and I realized that I needed to square up the larger faces also, so I did that and then I scribed the lines again. Next I machined the top faces to the right depth to fit the high speed steel inserts, and then I started cutting the dovetails with a 60 degree dovetail cutter. I've never used one of these dovetail cutters before, and I was really pleased with how well it worked. Now I can drill and tap a hole for the clamps that will hold down the inserts. All right, well, it's starting to come together. Next, what I have to do is drill and tap some holes for these M8 bolts. And then I have to drill and remount some holes for these pins. And what I'm gonna do is just ream it out slightly oversized, and then I'll use set screws to hold them in place. Now what I need to do is cut away some material here so that they hang over my vise jaws. Here's what I'll be cutting out. And I also need to drill and tap some holes for some set screws to retain these pins. And you'll notice that there's a counter bore here, and that, that's for some springs, but I don't have the springs yet, so I'm gonna wait until I get those in order to cut it to the right size. This is the rod that I'll use to make the pins. I'm not exactly sure what this steel is, but I think it's a fairly hard stainless steel. It was fairly hard to cut through with my hacksaw. It's possible it was work hardening as I was cutting it, because I've heard that that can happen with stainless, but I'm just not sure.
So I learned a pretty valuable lesson here today, and that is that I can't rely on cold rolled steel to actually hold its shape after being machined. Take a look at how much these things have warped. I was really surprised to see this, and I think what happened is because I removed large pieces here and here, that released some stress in the material and that caused them to bow. Fortunately, these top faces are perfectly flat, but where this becomes a problem is because these holes were machined really precisely, they're supposed to run along these pins, and because the material is bowed, the pins splay out slightly like this. Fortunately, I designed these things to sit in my vice jaws, so because the vice jaws are opening up uniformly, that means that these pieces are not rocking. And there's also going to be springs in here, which adds some pressure and allows them to open up in a very uniform way. And that prevents it from binding. I'm also going to machine a counterbore into these holes so that the springs have somewhere to compress into. And that will shorten the length of these holes. So I'm hoping that that will improve its functionality a little bit. Well, fortunately, they're not binding up as badly now that the holes are shorter, so I'm really happy about that. I'll make the clamps using this piece of mild steel that I milled off camera, but first I need to grind a 60 degree angle onto both ends of the high speed steel inserts. I don't have a tilting table for my belt grinder yet, but I can just barely get 60 degrees out of it like this. With those done, now I can start working on the clamps. They look good like this, but I thought bluing them would make the whole thing look a lot nicer in the end. I wanted to etch my channel name onto the steel, so I used my wife's vinyl cutter to cut out a stencil, which I'll use as a resist. This process is called electro etching. It's a really simple setup, just a 9 volt battery, some leads, a little bit of salt water, and some q-tips. This was my first time doing this, and I'm really impressed by the results. I'll definitely be using this technique again in the future.
I really wanted the text to stand out a little better, so I used some bluing compound to darken it, and then I just sanded the rest away. Well, that's all the parts made. Now I can put it together and test it out. It's working really well, but I need to put some chamfers on these sharp corners, otherwise I know I'll bump into them eventually. This file guide design is different than any others that I've seen because it fits onto vice jaws and it has springs that force it open. This allows for easy repositioning of a workpiece versus having to loosen and tighten bolts every time. But of course I added bolts as well so it can be used outside of a vise. It's also quite a bit larger than others that I've seen at about 6 inches. Or maybe it's just average. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was way more work than I thought it would be, but that's generally how it goes. Let me know what you think and if you would have done anything differently yourself. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future projects. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.